Yo, Elliot, do you feel like having higher testosterone makes it harder to practice semen retention? I have been optimizing for many months since taking the King lessons in the program. I've noticed that when I sleep well, lift, supplement, stay hydrated, I have more libido. The problem is all that stored up energy makes me want to release it even more. Is there a way around it? Well, the first thing I would say, bro, is congratulations. You have normal libido. I think the problem is that most of us don't live healthy lifestyles, right? We don't sleep well. We don't eat well. We don't lift well. We don't use supplements to stay hydrated. And so you're having the libido of a normal man, right? And so it may seem like, wow, you know, I have, my, I have high libido, but really you have normal libido because you're living a normal lifestyle. Not, not, not a postmodern normal lifestyle, but a human grade normal lifestyle doing the best things that uh, you can to optimize your health. And now you're horny as a result, right? Because you got vitality in your body. You're rested, you're strong, maybe your testosterone is up. The bottom line is you're firing on all cylinders, brother. You're humming like a finely tuned machine, right? And as a result, you're feeling good, right? When you feel good, what happens? You're erect, right? An erect man, right? Not a slap dick soft penis man. You're a stand-up guy, <laughs> right? You're standing up tall, firm. And then you have the dilemma, but I want to release it. The more I practice semen retention and experience the benefits of it, the more I look for strategies to sort of temper my libido. And I don't know if it's really tempering the libido, but it's tempering this this reach or this run or this needing to release it. This is just something, this is just me, right? This is something that I've, I've realized, I've recognized, and I'm sticking by right now. Male orgasm is not worth it. It's not. Male orgasm lasts, what, five seconds? The most, right? Right? We And it's and then so we lose so much for five seconds of pleasure. Really what we're after, here's the thing too. You say release, but I don't think it's the release that's, that's, that's we're hankering for. I think what we're really hankering for is that shot of neurotransmitters that happen in the brain when you have an orgasm. Did you know that? That when you have an orgasm, when a man has an orgasm, when anybody has an orgasm, there's an explosion of neurotransmitters in the brain that is analogous to that of somebody who used heroin. It's a hit of drugs. So is it that we're relieving ourselves because we're blowing our load? Or is it that we're getting a hit? Right? Which one is it? Now, if you study uh, the science of uh, porn or something like that on YouTube, just look it up. You know, what happens in the brain? The brain on porn. Brain on porn, I think that's what it's called. But it still has to do with, you know, any kind of masculine uh, orgasm and release, right? Because what do you watch porn for? So you can have your five-second orgasm. Mask male orgasms suck, and they're not worth it. I don't ever want to have one ever again in my life, right? Even if I ejaculate by accident, I'm not going to enjoy it. I'm mad, right? And if you read the book uh, by, I forget his last name, his fir first name. His last name is Brother Moore. Something Brother Moore. He's got a book called uh, uh, The Gentleman's Guide to Carezza. He even says in that book, it's so funny, he says, if you do ever slip up, like when you're having Carezza sex, which is, you know, you're having sex, but you're not blowing your load. He says, if you blow, if you, if you screw up and something happens and you blow your load, he said, don't enjoy it. Do not allow yourself to enjoy it because that's what we become addicted to, the joy of letting go. And here's, man, I got a whole lot of philosophies around this and ideas around this because it's kind of new to me. So I got like my brains all over the place. Another thing, okay, number one. Male orgasms suck. They're not worth it. It's not worth blowing your load for five seconds of euphoria. That's number one. Number two, I'm starting to, just because I'm conscious of myself when I'm practicing semen retention, I become much more self-conscious. I'm so much more, when I say self-conscious, not in a bad way, meaning like I'm watching myself. I'm watching myself, right? And one of the things, one of the things I notice in, in watching myself is that, especially during the act, right? The minute I become unconscious, that's when the orgasm, that's when the release happens. That's when a mistake will happen or whatever, right? I'll, I'll ejaculate. I only ejaculate if I allow myself to become unconscious. 
But the more, and this is, I think this is why they say, like, if you're having sex with a girl, you should think about baseball, right? Think about something else, right? Because what happens is, if you keep your mind occupied with the task at hand, right, what you're doing, or you're just keeping your mind on something else, you don't lose yourself in the moment. And so there are times where I feel like I'm about to lose myself, and I look, and I, I realize I'm not paying attention. That's why. I'm letting myself drift off into ecstasy, and I don't think that's a, I don't think that's very manly at all. I don't think men should be blowing our loads nearly as much as we do because it's I think it's a sign of a feminacy that we're reaching for ecstasy. Oh, I want to let go, let go, and let God carry me. That's kind of like what we want when I when we, you know, when we're chasing women, when we're having sex with women, we're watching porn and shit like that. It is a there, there's a sense there's a sense of wanting mommy. Right? Because when was the last time you felt completely free to let go, right? When you were in mommy's arms, right? You could piss yourself, shit yourself, cry, and just be completely unconscious, right? And I think men, especially when we're being effeminate, we have this craving to go back to the cradle, right? Let me go. And I think that's what drug addiction is. It's a call to go back to the, to the, to the free no responsibility, ecstasy of being in mommy's arms. Oh, just let go. Let go of the world. Just numb, right? Numb. And so I'm starting to think that when we chase orgasms, we're chasing this desire to be mama's boys again, to be cradled in mommy's arms, right? All this all this chasing, this, uh, you know, when people go on these psychedelic trips and stuff, I think it's all from, born from the same sentiment right that we're not willing to face reality and that we want escape we want escape and, and sex is an addiction too sex and porn is an addiction it's an escape right so i know that's not answering your question these are just a little bit of like philosophies that i come upon as i'm practicing here with you you're a healthy man you got energy but you've become addicted to orgasm i don't think that we need to release in fact i think that there's a no i think there's a release valve in the human body in the male body that will allow you to release when you're sleeping. Not they call it nocturnal emissions, right? So when it when it needs to to be released because the body wants to purge itself of the semen, I think it'll just happen naturally. It'll just happen naturally when you're asleep, right? Nocturnal emissions. And if you're following the advice that I gave several weeks ago uh, about the traditional Chinese medicine, if you're if you're in your 20s, right? It says how often should you blow your load? Once a week. Right? About once a week. I'm in my 40s. I'm supposed to blow my load once after two weeks, so 16 days. Right. So there's a time that you do need to blow your load. I do believe that. I don't think you would do no fap indefinitely. I don't think that's the way. That's just my opinion and based on what I study and read. You don't do no fap indefinitely. You stretch it out so that you maximize that buildup. Then you release, right? Because maybe the Bobby Dotty doesn't need a release. But it's the it's the it's the orgasm reflex in the brain that we become addicted to. So what do you do? What do you do? Is there a way around this? Is your question right? What do I do? Okay. First of all, <laughs> kind of going back and forth again. Don't enjoy don't enjoy your orgasm. Stop enjoying orgasm. <laughs> That's Uncle E saying weird stuff again, right? I know somebody's gonna make a video about this. Elliot Hall says you shouldn't have orgasm. Well, I'm saying. Just like a, a drug addict or someone who's that addicted to junk food, right? What does an orgasm offer you except five seconds of pleasure and then, for me, two weeks before I feel like you feel right now? It takes me almost two weeks, 10 days minimum, about 10 days. By the 10th day, I'm like, wow, I'm feeling like an animal again, right? For five seconds of blowing the load, I got to wait 10 days to blow to fill myself up back. You guys are younger, it may be less, it might be five days, but still, five seconds for five days, it's not worth it. I'd rather build myself up, and I like the way I feel when I'm retaining. I can tell that I'm on my point, I'm on point. What do you do? Here are a few things that I shared in other videos that I'm going to ask you to consider yourself right now. I'm not going to go too far down this rabbit hole because I did so already. You're horny, right? And then your dick gets hard. The worst thing you could do when your dick gets hard is focus on your dick. And I know that's the hardest thing to do is not focus on your dick when your dick is hard. When your dick is hard, you have to withdraw from it. And by telling you you need to withdraw, 
means I also got to tell you what it looks like when you engage, right? Like we are all guys, we all know. When you're focused on your dick, what are the things you're doing? You're doing that dick pump, right? You ever do that, pro I call it the prostate pump. You ever doing that thing where like your, your dick is hard and you start like, oh, and you can move it, right? Stop moving your dick, <laughs> right? The pubic muscles that like engage and then you do this and like, oh, oh, I just got to do something with this cock. Stop, stop doing that voluntarily. And that will help you actually know if you stop doing that voluntarily, right? Because usually we do it involuntarily. It's just like, oh, just, oh, all right, it feels good. And I'm doing a dick pump. Like I, it's almost like you're, you're want to push the come out, right? Like you want to push it out. That's what we act like. At least I know I do. Instead of doing that, notice when the prostate wants to pump, you want to do that, that penis pump and don't do it. That also you can carry into caressa sex. When you're having sex with a woman and you know the difference between when you're when you're pushing and when you're just relaxing. You can have a relaxed hard cock. You don't have to you don't you don't have to make your dick do anything. You just relax and have a hard cock. But a lot of times we're like we're like pushing it. We want it to do something, right? Take your focus off of your dick and focus on your belly. Right? What is your belly? Your belly? Your belly button? Your right below your belly button? The Dan Tien, they call it in Chinese medicine, is right above the prostate. Right above, So you got your, your cock and prostate. We'll call this a cock and prostate. And we'll call this your belly. So you relax your, you relax your cock and prostate. Right? Just, just, just don't give it that pump. Notice it, right? And you're going to, it's the weirdest thing because if you're, if you're conscious, you're going to realize, wow, my body wants to do the dick pump. Don't do it. And instead, Breathe through the belly, right? So what are you doing? You're drawing the energy up, right? You're drawing it up out of out of the pelvic floor. You got to pull the tension. That's what it is. You got to pull the tension up out of the pelvic floor into the belly and then into the heart. And you can do this while you're having sex too if you don't want to blow your load like a premature ejaculator. My wife knows I'm starting to get hot when I do this. That means I'm trying to pull the energy away from my dick and balls and prostate. And I think that's what sexual transmutation is, right? It sounded so mystical to me when I read about it the first time in Thinking Grow Rich. Then I would see like, you know, people talking about it on YouTube and stuff. And it's like, it was always like, you know, hippie guru types with, you know, sitting cross-legged, long hair. You know, hippies, right? Sexual transmutation, man, right? It's like the same dude that's tripping on acid. But it's not that mystical, right? <laughs> People like to make shit mystical. It's not that mystical. Sexual transmutation is not that mystical. It's not magic. It's stop putting the tension on your dick, breathe that tension up into your body, and then go do something else, right? You got to practice that. You And it, here's the thing. It's not in your head. And I think that's a part of the problem in our world right now is that we think that everything's in your head. And it's like, oh, I need to tell myself a new story or I need to think about something different. I need a new, here's what we really need, what we ask for anyway, not what we need. We always want a philosophy. Give me a philosophy about it, right? Or or medicine, right? We're, we live in a world of philosophy and medicine. Give me ideas about it or give me a pill to fix it. What I'm saying is just go to your body. Go to your body. You don't have to think about this. There's no high philosophy, high concept about it. And it's not, it's not very hard. It just requires you to pay attention. Go to your body. Notice what your body is trying to do and don't let it do it. <laughs> right? That's the funniest thing. It's like fasting, right? You ever fast, right? If you're in this program, you fasted. What happens when you fast? Your body is, is hankering for food, but you don't let it do it. It's no different. It really isn't any different because there's a pain in the body when you start fasting. First few days of fasting, it's like, ah, oh, right? You might get those little pains, right? And get like, you feel like your throat. Oh, man, my throat is like closing up. You feel all kinds of weird things because your body's like doing stuff because it's like, where's the food, bro? And it's almost like these parasites. Do you ever see on like National Geographic? You ever see these parasites that like catch on to like a, 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 a bird or something 
and it makes the bird become a zombie and the bird starts like eating other birds and shit like that. It's almost <laughs> it's almost what it's like. Like our body becomes attacked by demons and these demons are like, he hasn't eaten yet. He's got to have food. Wait, but he's fasting. But he needs food now and the throat starts closing up and the body starts contorting, right? Just like that girl in The Exorcist. The body starts doing weird shit. When you're doing a dick pump and you're focused on your cock, you're being like a possessed person. Oh, 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 I got to release it. Oh, right? You act like somebody who's got a demon inside them. The way you avoid that, the way you work with that is stop the body. Stop the body. You got to be lord over your own body. Otherwise, your body's going to be kidnapped and carried away by some demons. Right? Food and sex. Those are the two. Those are the two that keep us gripped the most. Be most mindful of food and sex. Food and fucking. Right? Those are the two things that will destroy us if we don't put them in check. Put our body in check. Put your body in check by fasting and no fapping. And you will achieve life mastery as a result, dude. I think it will help you. I think it will be good. I think you can keep going. Don't get, don't beat yourself up, right? If you do blow your load, I am of the opinion that it's good to blow your load every once in a while. Be that by having sex. And it's like, look, if you can reach, you know, those those time those time frames that I shared with you guys last week, good. If you're single, you know, look, I'm not all against masturbation, you know. I, I, I think maybe if it's used responsibly, not something that you're doing every day or every other day even, but something that like once a week, right? If you're a young man, you're in your 20s, once a week, you got to clean the pipes, right? You're just giving, it's just, I think it might, I think it's healthy. I don't know, right? I think, does that go against uh, my Catholic faith? Probably, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm a sinner, I guess. But I think for your health, I think you got to clean the pipes once a week at least, right? For a young man in his 20s. Man in his 30s and 40s, twice a week. I mean, uh, every other week, right? That's where I'm at right now. I try to hold my load no longer, no shorter than, than 14 days. That's not easy. It ain't easy. But I aim, I aim, I aim, right, to make it that way. And so I think you should do the same, dude. Yeah. Well, Patrick he says, I think it's easier to abstain completely than to ma masturbate responsibly. Then do that, right? I'm just giving you my opinion. Right? Do that. Abstain completely. Right? But don't beat yourself up if you relapse. That's all I'm saying. Don't beat yourself up if you relapse. Don't be hard on yourself and think of yourself as a failure. You're not. You're not. You're a guy. You're a man. You're a noble creature. You're God's son. You got the Imago Dei, image of God on you, but you still have this beastly body. Right? And God forgives because God knows. God realizes it's tough being a human. All the angels are watching us in heaven saying, well, I know it's a tough battle out there, but they're rooting for us, right? And just like with your favorite team, if you're rooting for your favorite team and they fumble the ball, what do you do? You say, okay, all right, no problem. We'll get it together. We'll be all right. Get the ball. All right, we're on defense now, right? You just keep going. You keep playing the game. You're like, all right, all right, that's fine. Shake it off. Shake it off. Now, you don't go and try to fumble the ball again, right? You do your best to hold on to the ball. If you fumble it, what do you do? You say, okay, that sucks, but we got to keep going. Let's go. That's it, dude. That's all it is. That's all it is, dude. I hope that helps, man. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. That sounds like you, and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.